Hey guys, Itaewon Sammy, Kangnam Sammy, and now Sri Lankan Sammy. Look at that. It is Friday, February 25, the 21st day of my retirement, 8 a.m. And I'm in shorts and a t-shirt. Heading off to the beach. I'm going to spend the day at the beach today. I've got a, nothing to do today. And it's actually going to be sunny and hot all day today. We've The weather here it gets a little bit rainy in the afternoons uh, because of the heat. So um, no use really going to the beach if, if that's going to happen. So I'm going to go to my favorite beach hotel, Camelot Beach Hotel in Nagumbo. But I'm going to talk to you today about the financial crisis in Sri Lanka. So what is going on here? A lot of people have been texting me and asking me, you know, how, how are things there? Because there is power cuts, there is food issues, there is inflation. So people are asking me how I'm surviving here and how this is affecting me. So first of all, I live outside of Colombo City, about an hour north, in a small town called Jayala. So it's it's a small town, um, not too crazy. Um, as you can see, I mean, it's just a community, right? So I'm just walking to the main road so that I can grab a a tuk tuk to take me to the um, to to where I want to go. So anyway. The financial crisis here in Sri Lanka was caused by overspending uh, and debt that was incurred by the previous administrations prior to COVID because Sri Lanka relies heavily on tourism and exports. Um, they assumed that with the spending, which was being done on infrastructure, um, that the tourism dollars would continue to come in to support uh, those expenditures. But that didn't happen. And the money was freely given by the Chinese government. And they're building this huge, sorry, I, I put on sunscreen. Maybe it's a little bit white on the screen there. I don't know, looks, looks funny. Anyway, um, they're building this huge Dubai style island in the in the port city, huge, absolutely ridiculous. But it's costing the Sri Lankan government a lot of money. They don't have the money to pay it back. Financial reserves or foreign reserves are dropping, which is cause they don't have fuel to power the uh, power generation stations. So there's a deficit of fuel, which means they can't generate power. The hydroelectric, um, uh, power plants can't operate because this is the drought season so we're having power cuts and the power cuts are about four hours a day so two hours in the morning two hours in the evening so yesterday we had 8 30 till 10 30 and then um, 4 30 till 6 30 or 7 so it depends on where you are in this rolling blackouts across the country so that's affecting me because I work online. Now, the power cuts have not cut into my work time because they happen outside of my work time. I have bought a um, power supply that gives me about two hours, an hour and a half to two hours of computer time, All right? Now, worst case, I can just use my cell phone because I'm, it's all online, right? So. Sorry for the noise. I'll finish this up at the beach, but because I'm coming up on the main road. But at the end of it, um, I, it's not really affecting me. I mean, it's kind of boring just to sit around with no power and it is a little hot when it happens in the afternoon. So that does, you know, it gets, it's, it's hot here in the afternoons. So then the other thing as well that is affecting is the gas shortage uh, fuel so right, my parents have a car trying to get fuel for the car is sometimes a little difficult because 
you have to line up. Now they have a driver, so he takes care of it, but it's still an issue. Inflation, yes, big problem here. But because I have foreign money, like I have money coming from South Korea, uh, it's not that big of a deal for me. We'll see what happens. Let me follow up with you once I get to the beach. Itaewon Sammy, Kangnam Sammy, Sri Lankan Sammy, I'm out. Hey guys, I'm back. Welcome back to my favorite hotel. Not the best hotel. I mean, it's a three-star hotel, but I mean, come on. If you're just coming for the day, spend time at the beach, at the pool. It's a little cloudy right now, but it's cloud. I mean, it's only 9 a.m., but the clouds burn off by, uh, by 10 or 11 and it becomes such a beautiful day. It's gonna be so warm. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some breakfast. Uh, I'm gonna put my bag down, grab a seat, then get some breakfast. And uh, after breakfast, head into the ocean because in the morning, the ocean is much calmer than it is in the afternoon. Once it gets to be about lunchtime, it becomes a little bit more rough and a little bit more uh, windy. So definitely wanna go into the ocean when it is I mean just look at that how can you not complain so beautiful so anyway I wanted to finish up my story about the uh, let's find a place to sit first I think I'm gonna go over there let's see yeah I'm gonna go over to that side so anyway I'm gonna finish my story about the financial crisis. So at basically what's going on is um, if you have money it doesn't really affect you that much. Inflation, there's rationing of basic goods, rice, milk, like my parents weren't able to get milk but the driver found a place and bought like six bottle, like six boxes of milk or whatever for their tea and for their curries and things like that. Potatoes, fish, meat, no problems. Rice, um, I mean, my parents have resources. They have people they can get things from, so that's not a problem. What it, it is affecting is the poorer people who don't have a lot to begin with, right? So that's affecting. It's really not affecting me that much other than the fact that I have to schedule and make sure that my batteries are powered up and that I have backup for my classes in the event the power goes, because the power goes out, there's a schedule. So they send the schedule out the day before of when the power is going to be cut. This situation will last for about another month or two until the monsoon starts and then the reservoirs fill up and they can do that. Sorry about that. I don't know why they're doing this so early. Anyway, I'm gonna go have breakfast. I'll be back. We'll talk a little bit more. Itaewon Sammy, King of Kingdom, Sri Lanka Sammy. I'm out. Hey guys, just a quick wrap up. Uh, I did record uh, a video, but the sound was really, really bad yesterday. So that's why I'm doing this like this today in my setup at home. Anyway, I wanted to wrap up my story about the financial crisis and, and how it's affecting. You heard me talking about, you know, having foreign money, um, you know, um, rationing, uh, the rationing certain products, fuel sometimes is an issue. Like a couple of days ago, there were huge lineups. Yesterday, nothing, no lineups. Uh, power outages, obviously during uh, weekdays are a little bit more like up to five hours in one day. But today, only two hours. Tomorrow, nothing. 
obviously uh, Saturday, today is Saturday, tomorrow is Sunday. So no power cut on Sunday. Today only one power cut in the late afternoon for two hours. So it's, it's not really affecting life for me personally. And as I said, it's for more of the poorer people who are in trouble already, uh, you know, not having a lot of money um, to survive, to pay the inflation costs. So um, what I'm doing is, you know, when I'm taking a taxi or a tuk-tuk, uh, buying things, I don't haggle as much as I used to. Um, um, I'll give a little bit of extra. Uh, it's not that big of a deal to me at, at this point. Uh, we'll see where the inflation goes. We'll see where the power cuts goes. The government is working on restructuring the debt with the Chinese government. I think that's going to be the solution. It's just going to take a little bit of time. Um, and as well, getting bridge loans or what have you from the Indian government because the India wants to have greater influence in Sri Lanka as opposed to the Chinese. So Sri Lanka is a little bit of a battleground between India and China because India and China are fighting over cash and uh, over Himalayan territory. So they're not friendly with, with each other. So India wants to have greater influence in Sri Lanka. So I think that that is going to be the route that's going. There's money coming in from there. Uh, fuel is on its way. So the stopgap measures for the next couple of months until uh, April, until the monsoon rains come to fill up the reservoirs so that the hydroelectric dams can start producing electricity. So only a couple more months. But like I said, I have a generator, not a generator, a battery to help me. Um, the power cuts is something you got to live with. It's a tropical country. It's not that big of a deal. I take a nap. When the power cut comes, I just go take a nap or I watch something on my phone um, because my power generator powers my modem and my modem is still working, connected to the network. So I still have internet, so that's not a problem for my phone. And like I said before, I can power my PC for up to two hours. So I'm living life, not a problem. So um, most of the hotels and tourist areas have diesel generators. Uh, so they, you know, they are taking care of that. Uh, if you're in a smaller place, like a hostel or, uh, you know, a small hotel, maybe they don't. So you got to suffer through that. Uh, when I was traveling, there were no issues. The power would go down and then come right back up again um, when the generator kicks in. Um, you know, hospitals and things like that, they have, they have their own backup power. Um, so that's, you know, life isn't, for me, life isn't being affected. It is affecting the poor people. So um, if anyone wants to travel here on vacation, that is what you can do to help bring money into the economy, bring dollars into the country. OK, so I'm just going to leave it at that. I will follow up with this story as it develops uh, and as things change in the country. Uh, if you have any questions, comments or concerns, Put it down below. Itaewon Sammy, King of Kangnam, Kangnam Sammy, Sri Lanka Sammy. I'm out.